Hi everyone, here is my final news update for 2021. I hope everyone had a great year and wish you an amazing 2022. So let's get to it. There is some sound support on one of the two PlayStation FPGA cores being developed for the DE10 Nano. The core with sound support does not use the Mr. Framework, but works on the hardware that is used by the Mr. Framework. The core is being developed by Laxer 3A and from the tweets he posted, he shows audio from full motion video sequences working. The videos play slightly slower than a real PlayStation due to the fact that his core is running slightly slower than a real PlayStation at 30 megahertz instead of 33.9 megahertz. I haven't seen any audio from actual gameplay, so I'm not sure if that's working. The other PlayStation Core in development is by Robert Pipe, and it too has received some updates. There's no sound support yet, but thanks to the Mr. Discord, his Mr. PlayStation Core now implements all CD commands, enabling a lot more games to work. He's also implemented fixes for the Geometry Transform Engine and other parts of the Core. Two-player support has also been added to Robert Pipe's Mr. PlayStation Core. I never realized it didn't have two-player support, but now it's good to know that it's there. Memory card support is also another feature that has been added. The support is preliminary, but you have the ability to share saves with a real PlayStation and other software emulators. This addition can help with testing because there are databases online of PlayStation game saves that can help you load certain situations for testing. Shadow Mask on the Mr. FPGA OS have been updated to give you more control so you can better fine tune the look of them. Shadow Masks were a certain technology used for old CRTs. The masks were a pattern of tiny holes that would emit different levels of red, green, and blue light being shot from an electron gun. That pattern of holes is what the Shadow Mask support in Mr. emulates. You have the choice of different patterns, sizes, and brightness levels. You still have to experiment to find out what looks good to you though. Along with the Shadow Mask update, there were some fixes to the NES, Super NES, and TurboGrafx-16 cores. I had previously reported from an app from Tatsutron for Mr. that allows you to control your setup from a smartphone. That app was Android only, but the developer now has a prototype for iOS phones. There's already a public release for the Android version, so if you have an Android phone, you can check it out now. Other updates to the main Mr. project involve an alpha release of a TRS-80 Color Computer 3 core, with some fixes made soon after the release. There's also been some updates to some arcade cores. Quality of life updates have been made to Arkanoid, Gyrus, Iron Horse, Jackal, Jailbreak, Scooter Shooter, Time Pilot, and Time Pilot 84. Finally, the Sword N5 core has added joypad support. Mr. Core developer Blackwine has previously added MRA support for Neo Geo games, but not all games were supported. He has now released updates that support more games. These MRA files allow you to treat Neo Geo games as arcade games instead of console games like Mr. Treats them by default. This is a matter of preference, so if you prefer to see your Neo Geo in the arcade section of the Mr. OS, then try these MRAs out. And now for some non-Mr. related retro news. I would first like to highlight an awesome podcast dedicated to CRTs done by the YouTube channels Zez Retro and Retrotech. It's called the Cathode Raid Podcast and they talk about some really informative CRT topics. They even take questions and answers to help out the community. Recently, they interviewed someone who's creating open source hardware to help revive CRTs. If you're curious about that hardware, or if you just want to listen to info on CRTs, check out the podcast. The MT32 Pi project officially supports the Raspberry Pi 02W now. MT32 Pi is a project that turns a supported Raspberry Pi into a sound module that can emulate the MT32, or you can add sound fonts to make it sound like any other sound module. You can then attach the Pi to a retro computer or Mr. FPGA and get improved music from classic computer games. Now, with official Raspberry Pi 02 support, you have more options with choosing the size of an MT32 Pi you want. 
A few weeks ago, I spoke about someone creating a Pi hat specifically for the Pi Zero 2. Check it out if you're interested. If you have a Game Gear motherboard on its last legs, an engineer from the Netherlands, Matisse Nilwick, might just be able to help you save it. He reverse engineered the Game Gear motherboard and is working on a replacement for users whose Game Gears are dying or dead. The board has improvements over the originals, like making it easier to install aftermarket LCD mods. But what's most important is that this helps in the preservation of the Game Gear handheld. Right now the motherboard is in the prototype phase, but the YouTube channel Macho Nacho Productions has a full video on how the board works. The Slow Mo Guys YouTube channel has a video on how old vector monitors from the arcades worked. They worked very differently than the standard CRT screens of the time. A standard CRT will draw the screen side to side and top to bottom, while vector monitors kind of worked like someone drawing each individual object in the game. This method would give you very sharp lines and will also make the game look very high res, but the objects being drawn will be much simpler. The Slow Mo Guys video will help you better understand this method by allowing you to see just how the vector monitor draws its objects. The History Channel posted an episode of Modern Marvels about gadgets of the 1980s on its YouTube channel. It talks about the growing use of the microprocessor and how it made so much of the technology we use today possible. The explosive growth of the home computer, the birth of Silicon Valley, the arcade and home video game industry. It also talks about the audio and video gadgets that were being used at the time and the mobile phone and much more. It's a really easy to follow episode on the technology that was being used in the 80s. So that's it for this episode. I provide links to all my sources in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.